Hello again, Driftart 2 fans. Uh, so, this is the third installment of my uh, tuning or build, and I learned some new lessons again because the thing just wasn't handling right. It was handling very poorly, actually. So, the I think the main culprit was the uh, washers they recommend to put in between these two bearings here. It, it recommended you put one of those thin washers in between these two bearings. But I realized after a while that there was a lot of play in the wheel. You know, the wheel would literally go like that. So you want to check your wheels here and make sure that this flat spot is behind or recessed in the wheel itself. If that flat spot is actually sticking out past the surface of the wheel, no matter how hard you tie the nut down, there's going to be play. So in order to basically make this, this flat part move inwards, I added three I have three washers in between those two bearings now in the back and I have two in between in the bearings in front but now I have absolutely zero play if I hold the upright here the, there's no play in the wheel at, at all the only play is actually within the suspension so that's the first thing you guys should do is you should check your wheels to make sure that when you put it on again that this flat spot here it's really hard to tell because it's so small, but what I'm pointing at right there, you want to make sure it's actually inside the surface of your wheel. Okay, so I uh, then also pretty much ignored the ride height that uh, I mentioned in the earlier video that Mohammed uh, Farad did. I forget his last name. I apologize because he is a different chassis. It's, it's that simple. Um, this is such a rear centric car you need to have weight over the front wheels or they just you know the thing just washes out even if anytime you turn the thing just continues going straight because there simply isn't enough traction on the front tires so for now I'm just you know I just put this magnet on and it does definitely help. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, I'm going to show the video of drifting with these three different types of tires. This, these tires, I forget who made them because they're like 10 years old. Could it, I think it might have been like PN Racing or something, or I, I forget, but there's, it literally says F2 and it's molded into the, the tire itself, whereas the rear says F5. So maybe some of you veterans in the hobby will recognize it, but. Uh, these are relatively, they are drift tires, but they're high grip drift tires because I think 10 years ago people didn't think to make super hard compounds. So you'll see in the, uh, the video that uh, I have to throttle it quite a lot. You can literally hear it, you know, bouncing over the uh, wooden, fake wooden floor I have. actually brings up another point that might be a, I think this is a design problem with this chassis. The rear has really nice supple suspension with these springs, the, the middle, middle uh, stiffness springs. The problem with the front is if I put the second hardest springs into this, the thing just won't actually suspend the car. It just sags out. So now these are the third stiffest springs, but they're just so stiff, they feel like they're two to three times stiffer than the rear suspension. So the rear is pretty supple, and what I think is probably correct, but the front is super hard. It's as if it's trying to, you know, do high speed grip racing, not, not soft, smooth drift racing or drifting. So I'm not sure what to say about that, but if it might be better to try to find springs you know in between this third one and the second ones that were included in this kit because the second ones are too soft but i feel like the third ones are way too hard 
they're just significantly harder than the rear ones. It might also have to do with the fact that the rear ones simply have longer springs. So there's a lot more uh, distance, I guess, to compress in that. Whereas the front springs, for some reason, are much shorter. So that could be an issue as well. I'm not a suspension expert, but anyways. But uh, unfortunately for now, I can't change it. So I still have the third, third springs in there, but they do feel that's affecting it. So now, another thing, let me put this wheel on. Because of those springs, this tension might be different between the left and the right side. I feel like, uh, I don't even think my chassis is actually level anymore. Because I, I adjusted the suspension to basically make the thing turn left and right equally. Like, if I actually set it to the, the suspension to be perfectly level, I don't think it's actually correct. Like, the left side might turn it might not turn at all, whereas the right side might. So, yeah, if you look at this, you can see the bumper I put on here, it's not even level. Sorry, let me get a better angle here. Okay. So you can see that this bumper isn't actually level. And, but it has to be that way right now. I'm guessing what, what's happening is my weight distribution isn't equal, and so I'm using the suspension to compensate for that. Because I have the gyro on this side, and all of the rest of the stuff is central. You know, on this side you do have the pulley system, and the motor is shifted a little bit on that side as well. So possibly, you know, one side is definitely heavier than the, than the other. So as I was, you know, driving it, I would just, you know, turn it left and see how well it reacted. Well, you know, if I turn it left, right? So if I'm turning left, you know, I want this thing to grab the ground, but I still want the, the other side touching, so I want to see this spinning. Sometimes you'll see that one wheel won't spin at all, and that pretty much means that it's not touching the ground. Right, so it takes a little experimentation, but when you turn it the other way, you basically want both wheels, I think, spinning. Possibly this one might stay stationary. If it's a super tight spin, this won't, this will just sit there while the outside is spinning around that pivot point. So I just, you know, tweaked the suspension tiny bit, like literally like two, three degrees until I saw, you know, the wheel spinning and when I was turning left or right equally. So that definitely takes a long time to figure out. But I, I in my video, uh, it does seem to turn left and right equally now. Um, the gyro itself, at first I had no gyro, but it's impossible to drive without the gyro. All it does is it just spins out immediately. It just instantly wipes out. So I uh, set the gyro to almost vertical in this orientation. You know, if the box is lengthwise horizontal, maybe, sorry, if I zoom in, you can see the, uh, it's a little bit this way right now it's a little bit that way it's not perfectly vertical uh, it does say plus over here so if you go all the way clockwise you know that's full gyro ability but it just makes this the front uh, tires you know rattle so much that I think it's gonna break the suspension arms so you really want to start from the full counterclockwise where the gyro is off and then slowly build up to it but as you see in uh, my video, the tires are wobbling quite a bit because uh, it, it's compensating for whatever is going on. But, you know, I can sort of get the thing to drift a little bit. I am not uh, a drifter, guys. I mean, you really probably, if you have questions, you really want to probably ask like Beaver or uh, what's the other channel? Sorry, I, I forget. Those guys have been drifting these mini cars for a while. I just really did the chassis build because I didn't see anyone do it in English. But I really don't know much about uh, setting up these things. So, But someone did ask, you know, how long these lengths, links are. And so you'll notice here I have one degree 
of a uh, toe out. We are actually, I also put in one degree of toe in. I think it's toe in, and so this would be toe out. Okay, so one in one. But here, I will pull out the calipers, so if you want to, you know, duplicate this. Again, the servo is uh, fully forward. I have this as far forward as possible. So the top, let's get rid of this magnet. This uh, top link here. The magnet's just trying to suck it down. I have 4.3 millimeters on this side. Yeah, pretty much the same on that side. So the top link, I have 4.3 millimeters of thread showing. I never, I never adjusted the caster yet, so that might also be affecting my, my handling. But uh, it's the stock, and uh, you can go back to my very first build. It's 7.9, or it's supposed to be 8. Yeah, there it is. It's 8. And just to confirm, yeah, it's 8. And then the steering link to get the uh, 1 degree of toe out. Let's see here. Up around 3 millimeters, it seems. Wait, 3, 3.3 on the. Yeah, it's about 3 millimeters. So 3, 3.3. So you can see that, you know, they're not perfectly equal. And that's because, you know, it's screwing into plastic. So you're going to have a lot of variation. Uh, also, you'll notice on this one, as I was messing about, one of these threads just totally came out when I was driving it because it wasn't equally in. So I ended up taking the whole piece of metal out of the, the links and putting a little red red uh, paint there. So I know that's the center mark of the... Uh, piece of metal so I can try to keep it you know equidistant so I have an equal amount of thread in each side of these ball ends okay so but I haven't done on the other ones because they haven't fallen out so that's just a different tip for you um, as far as the tires or tire choices I kind of feel like these domed ones are the way to go definitely these very old tires with the embossed uh, F5, F2, they just have too much grip for my particular surface. Maybe on glass or something like that, they'd be all right. But um, I'll show still images also where its uh, traction is. But yeah, that's another thing. The uh, original length, I think, for the rear, and actually pretty much the front, was off. It was just too much cambered inwards. But uh, I want I want my traction to be in the middle of the tire. That's my logic. So on these, these are perfectly flat. The front is still actually the traction's a little bit on the inside. You can see on the it's a little on the inside surface. But once I put these uh, blue ones on, they're pretty much in the middle. So what's happening is these are super old, so you can clearly see that this isn't flat anymore because these came off an all an all wheel drive mini C. So and I never adjusted it. It's just bone stock. But the way that Kyosho set up that old M A O one O all wheel drive mini Z, you can clearly see that it's uh, dug away a lot of the tire so this probably isn't a good reference but these are brand new and so my suspension is set up where all the you know tires are set up in the the middle you know, as far as the traction goes so that's that's what I'm sticking with but the key thing is uh, with the dome surface only that much is touching the the floor so it takes very little power to drift. You can drift super slow with this because uh, it's braking traction so low in the RPM range. Whereas this thing, it's uh, you can see more of the plastic here is, is touching the ground 
the taper there. So it just takes a lot more. And I also think this is again a harder, a, a softer compound, so it's gripping more. Where this might be harder, or I'm not sure if it's harder or just less of it's touching the floor because it's domed. So I'm gonna probably stick with these domed ones, and then I'll actually tune this thing right. In the video that I show the thing drifting, I never adjusted the gyro. Adjusting the gyro might be an easy fix to compensate for different tire compounds, but I wanted to just see what it looked, what it was like, never adjusting the gyro to see how difficult it was. And so my immediate reactions were, you know, it's very easy to do slow drifting with these. These are, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what brand. I think these might be PN Racing as well. Uh, but they're, they're flat, right? So you can see a lot of it is touching the ground. So it, it, although they're a harder compound than these, still it wasn't, it was a lot harder to drift with these. So yeah, I'm gonna stick with these for now. It just seems easier. You know, if I was drifting outside, it wouldn't matter, but I'm trying to drift in a really small area. So I wanna be able to break traction as, as much as possible and essentially drift as slow as I can and I think these are the way to go. Okay so hopefully hopefully if you have this chassis maybe you want to you want to try these links but uh, the most important thing I learned this time around is there was too much play in the the wheels themselves because one spacer wasn't enough. I have three spacers in back, two spacers in front and now I have no play in the in the wheel. Right. Okay, well I'm sure there'll be another video because once I put the body on this thing, I have to readjust everything. I think I may actually buy one of those uh, balance scales. There's something on AliExpress and eBay I see where it actually has four scales tied to a central box and it tells you, you know, how much weight you have on each individual wheel. So I think if you have, invest in one of those, you'll very easily you know, set it up so you have the equal weight and so equal traction and that would make your drifting a whole lot easier. Right now I'm just, you know, adjusting my uneven weight just by looking at how much of the tire is, you know, being worn as I drive it. But obviously that's a very time consuming process. Alright, I'm rambling on so I guess that's it for today and uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next uh, drift.